That is good. <laughs> I can talk to you after this. Okay, cool. Um, cool. Those are my changes. Did you, um, is the audio, did you test to see if they improved the audio from this Yeah, we did. I'm sorry, I'm being all silly. No worries. I mean, it's not, it's not super fancy, but they'll get the job done. Affirmative or negative? Negative. 
Uh, affirmative. Yeah. Affirmative wants you to accept the proposition. Negative wants you to reject it. And then we have a basic belief in reasoning and logic and argumentation that if you put forward a claim, it is now your responsibility to prove that claim true. You, anytime, and this is true in life, right? So this is good to know for the next argument with your boyfriend or girlfriend. If they say, we're gonna eat at Burger King, you are not now responsible to say why we shouldn't eat at Burger King. They are responsible to say why we should, right? Because they have made the claim. And in terms of debate, affirmative is the one who is responsible for getting uh, the judge or the audience or whomever to accept the proposition so they take on the burden of proof. Uh, that doesn't mean that negative doesn't have responsibilities. Negative will absolutely have responsibilities but you take on the burden of proof. One other example is in a courtroom. If you're in a courtroom and the you have the prosecution and the defense, right? Who has the burden of proof? The prosecution. The prosecution. Why? They're making a positive claim. They're the ones making the claim. They are the ones claiming that you broke the law, and they have to prove it true. The defense does not have to disprove it. The, the prosecution has to prove it. Okay? So, in, a in a debate, it's the same way. Affirmative has the burden of proof. Uh, it's also the reason, if you've looked at the speech times, that affirmative gets the first and the last speech, which seems a little bit unfair. Right? Why do they get to speak first and last? Well, because they have the burden of proof. So that's why they get to speak first and last. Okay. So then I have, I said on this handout, to meet the burden of proof, the affirmative has to provide all the stock issues. And this is for a policy style resolution. We sometimes debate other types of resolutions, but we're going to talk today about policy style resolutions. When I say policy style, do you know what that means? No. Okay. So a policy, so we could have a fact resolution, a value resolution, or a policy resolution. And mostly we debate these. Sometimes we debate facts and values. So a fact resolution asks us if something is true or not. A value resolution asks us if something is good or not. And a policy resolution asks us, should we do something or not? Most of the things you're going to debate are whether we should do something or not. They're mostly going to be policy-based resolutions. And these stock issues that I've given you here are for these policy-based resolutions. Should we do something? Should we go to Burger King? Right? Uh, and I'm going to have an example that I'd like you to work on in just a minute. But anytime we ask ourselves, should we do something or not, there are some basic things, uh, some basic arguments that the affirmative needs to make for us to know whether we should do something or not do it, or maybe do something else. Okay. So the first couple things there are, the, it says definitions and criteria. So the first thing that the affirmative does in their speech quite literally the first words out of their mouth after like, hey, how you doing? Uh, let's talk. I'm really okay with that. Really? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> uh, is definitions, right? So we're going to have a proposition, and those propositions could be all sorts of things. What, what's a current event going on right now that we might debate about? ISIS to the gates of hell. Sure, we're going to talk about ISIS. The United States should significantly up its military presence in Iraq and Syria, right? Uh, might be something we could debate. What's another thing that's coming out of the world right now that we might debate? The Hobby Lobby ruling. The Hobby Lobby ruling. What do you mean by the Hobby Lobby ruling? Do you, like, do you want me to define the Hobby Lobby Yeah, who, who in here does not know what the Hobby Lobby ruling means? Okay, uh, it so. was a ruling that um, said that a company did, have, did not have to provide birth control to its employees because of religious affiliation. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we might have a, so now that we have, uh, the Supreme Court has decided that corporations have some religious liberties, we might change that, right? We might have a resolution that says corporations will no longer have religious freedom. Right? We could get, we could make that change. Um, and 
So we debate usually pretty significant things going on in current events. So one of the first things that we knew we need to do is define that. Right? So if you're in a round and you're affirmative and the resolution says the Supreme Court should overturn the Hobby Lobby decision, guess what you need to define first? What we need to be clear on first before we ever debate anything? What the heck is Hobby Lobby, right? Um, which has come to mean like this representation of corporations having religious rights, but it's actually like a craft store. So we need to be clear that we're not just like, we're going to go like storm the gates of a craft store and shut it down, right? That we're actually talking about this particular Supreme Court decision that happened in the last several months. Okay? And that's going to be true for almost everything we debate. Uh, there are going to be some words that we either disagree about or are controversial or are unclear. Um, and those things affirmative should define. Okay? So that's the first thing that you're going to do. So that's with definitions. The second thing is a criterion. We need to know how are we going to evaluate this debate. You don't want to leave it up to the judge or the people in the room to come up with any method of evaluation they want. You want to tell us how we should evaluate it. Because there are many different ways I could evaluate a debate. You want me to evaluate it in a good and fair way that's relevant to what you're debating. Usually in policy resolutions, and I think I've written this down, it's usually cost-benefit analysis or net benefits. And those are two terms that relatively mean the same thing. So you're going to, uh, by cost-benefit analysis, I mean at the whole end of the debate, is doing something going to give us more benefits or more costs? So if our debate is whether we should go to Burger King or not, are we going to get more benefits out of going to Burger King, or are we going to get more costs out of going to Burger King? You know, well, it's going to, you know, it's going to be tasty, so that's going to be a benefit. Uh, it's probably going to be bad for my long-term health, so that's going to be a cost, right? So we're going to weigh all of those out and eventually decide. Uh, which is going to be better, which is going to be worse, and if everything's better at the end, ultimately, who wins? Affirmative. Affirmative. And if everything's worse at the end, who wins? Negative. Passes back. Yeah, and that's what I mean by cost-benefit analysis. And just because I use the word, just because I use the word cost, you should not think of that as just money, right? It's anything bad that might happen as the result of us doing an action. So if someone dies, that's a big cost, right? Yeah. So don't think of it as just money. All right. So so we're going to define what it means, and then you're going to knock your glasses off, and then you're going to tell us uh, how we should evaluate the debate, uh, and then we're going to set up the rest of the debate, um, and we're going to try to meet these stock issues, which happen to make a wonderful little acronym. Shitza. <laughs> Sometimes with shits, because it's just fun to remember that way. Uh, and you'll never forget it. See, poop jokes right themselves. <laughs> uh, so the first is significant harms, right? If we're going to do something, if we're going to make a change, there's probably something wrong right now. In fact, there is. There's something wrong right now. Uh, because, uh, naturally, as human beings, we are lazy and we don't like taking risks. And so if we can continue to be lazy and not take any risks, that is our default position. Right? If everything is fine and lollipops and sunshine and puppies, then we're not going to do anything. Why should I get up off my couch if everything's great? <coughs> Uh, so, the affirmative, the first thing that they want to show is, not everything is great. We need to come up with harms that are significant enough, things that are wrong right now, to get me past wanting to be lazy and scared. Right? So there's something wrong right now. So, uh, if, I, if we're in my Burger King debate, one of the harms might be, I'm really hungry. And that's going to get me over my laziness and make me want to go get some food, right? Because there's something wrong right now. Uh, if we get to a more serious topic like ISIS, like journalists are being beheaded. Uh, cities in Syria and Iraq are being taken over. That's a pretty significant harm that should make us want to get up and do something. 
and be willing to take a risk uh, because there are significant things going on. But what I want to stress today is that you do these things in your everyday life, not just in, in big, it doesn't have to be war and peace, right? It can be Burger King, right? So you're going to set up that there's something wrong. That's the first stock issue. Then the next one is inherency. And this one I say is sometimes the forgotten stock issue. I have to do that one, I'm sorry. Inherency is this idea that the problem is not just going to solve itself. That there is something that will not, that's getting in the way of the problem just solving itself, right? That magically, that if you don't take an action, it's not going to solve. There are some things in this world that will solve themselves without us doing anything, right? But if I'm in my Burger King example, a hamburger is not just going to magically show up in my hands unless I take an action, right? It's not just going to appear. And if I go back to the ISIS example, they're not going to stop taking over cities in Iraq unless we take an action. But you want to show that it's not just going to solve itself, that there's something in the way. Usually there's a law or an attitude or something in the way that is going to stop us, uh, stop the status quo from just solving the problem all it's on its own. Okay. So that's the I, proof that the, it's not just going to solve itself. Then you need a topical plan. Okay. So you're going to have a plan. You're going to do something. We're going to go to Burger King. We're going to spend a billion dollars on military aid to Iraq. We're going to send troops in. We're going to send uh, the, the Air Force in. Right? We're going to do something. And there are lots of steps to that plan, but basically the most important one is the mandate. What are you going to do? And as concisely as possible, what are you going to do? Then you have solvency. So you set up these harms. You told me they weren't going to solve themselves. You gave me a way to solve them. And now you're going to tell me how that actually happens. How do those harms now get solved by the action that you took in the plan? And if my harm was, I'm really hungry, and my plan is, we're going to Burger King, I ate at Burger King and now I'm not hungry anymore. Things got better. I solved that significant harm of hunger. Right? You know, if your harm is that ISIS is taking over uh, cities in Iraq, now the US Army is going to solve that because they're going to bomb them into yesterday. Um, and now they can't take over cities anymore. Okay. So you set up a problem. You told me it wasn't going to solve itself. You gave me a plan to solve it, and then you're going to explain how did that plan actually do that. So now we've made it all the way to the S and shits. Okay. The last one is A, advantages. And even though it's last, and I think I even say this, even though it's last, it's really important. Yeah, though they are listed last, advantages are extremely important because you want to get beyond just solvency. You don't want to just solve the harms. You could theoretically win by just solving harms. But hopefully something good happens above and beyond just solving the bad. Not only did we stop the bad things from happening, but we made extra good things happen. And that's what the advantages are. Right. So in, uh, in ISIS, maybe now Iraq's economy gets stronger. Maybe the Syrian civil war finally ends. Those are some pretty awesome advantages. Uh, might be harder in my Burger King example, right? Maybe because we're supporting Burger King, there are still local jobs available for people. I don't know. You save five bucks from an alternative? Yeah, I save five bucks, yeah. Cool could be an advantage. I still have money in my pocket at the end of the day. More time to put towards making money. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So those are my advantages. And that, guess what? So you, so you have all these things that you have to do as an affirmative to meet those stock issues, to meet your burden of proof. How many speeches do you have to get all of that information out? 
one. But you, you speak at the end, too. Yeah, but all of this information comes out in the very first speech. This is your first speech in the debate. This is the Prime Minister's Constructive. Um, if you flip over at the bottom of the back, I have the three affirmative speeches and what you should do. The Prime Minister's Constructive is a seven minute maximum speech. And in that, you're gonna uh, lay out the affirmative case and give all the stock issues to meet that burden of proof. So you gotta meet all of the shits up in that very first speech. Okay. One of the things that's awesome about that, though, is that you have that all prepared by the time you walk into the round. So that first speech is the, really the only speech in the entire round that you know what you're saying definitely in that speech. And you have seven minutes to get that all out. Also, if you look on the back, you'll notice that there's a different, there are two different styles that do the same thing. One of the first one I say is the traditional model that goes in exactly the order. The other one is the advantages model where they put the harms and solvency into the advantage, right? We had a harm, this is how the plan solved it, and this is the good thing that comes as a result of it. So there are two different styles of organization, traditional and then much more you'll see now teams using this advantages model. Okay, but either one will get you past that burden of proof and get you to a basic case. Questions so far? I'm going to have you work in it together in just a moment. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'm going to give you a very everyday topic. You would never actually debate this in a part of the round, but it might be something you end up debating one day in your life, or maybe you have debated one day in your life. Since this is an affirmative round, you're all going to be affirmative, but I'd like you to work maybe in small groups. Find new people, introduce yourself. Uh, work in groups of twos, threes, maybe four at max. Here is the big policy decision you are trying to make. You want to get a dog. I want to get a dog. Okay? Now, I want to see, can you come up and meet all of those stock issues? Can you tell me what the shitza is for getting a dog? What is the significant harms? What's the inherency? What's your topical plan? What's the solvency? And what are the advantages of getting a dog? All of you are for it. Now I want you to see, can you come up with uh, all of those parts of a basic affirmative case for why we're going to get a dog? So go ahead. Uh, talk it out, take some notes, and then we'll come back and talk as a whole group. As long as you have something that we can have a discussion.
there's actually no inherency to that because the sat in the status quo without them doing anything right now, it's going to go up on its own. So therefore, we don't need to do my plan. My plan has already happened. It's going to happen whether I do something or not. Getting the dog. We're getting the dog. The dog's not just going to walk into my house, right? I need to change my attitude and go do something. Um, for bombing ISIS, right? So it's not just going to happen on its own. We are going to be some some army captains who just decide we're going to do it. Congress is going to have to change a law, or the president is going to have to change a law. Right? Yeah. 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 So, so if the harms are by themselves, and then you just want to show, look, these harms aren't going to solve themselves. Yes. If, I don't, if we don't do my plan, we're never going to solve these harms. Yeah. 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 So, so almost always, inherency is that there's either an attitude in the way, or there's a policy or a law in the way. So right now, the attitude that was in the way is before I didn't want a dog. So that was what was stopping the status quo from getting me a dog. each other. I'd like to come back and talk it through. Uh, we can go a little bit late, but technically we started late and technically this ends at 10. So, yeah. Uh, your next seminar doesn't start until 10, 15, so we can go a little bit past 10, but you know, you probably want a bathroom break in between this. So, let's come back and talk as a group. Let's talk about why we're getting a dog. So, what are the harms? What's wrong right now that might eventually compel me to do the plan of getting it up? Yes. Loneliness. I'm so lonely. So my harm number one is I'm lonely. Do we have any other harms that might compel us? Yes. Lack of protection due to neighborhood crime rate. Okay. So I'm worried about crime. service dogs if you can't see? Could be. Maybe a service dog? Yes. A lot more physically fit. Yeah. I don't, you know, dogs going to force me to get out of the house. Okay? And make me more fit. Okay? So I can come up with lots of harms. Here's the trick with harms. You want enough to meet that they are significant, right? That's the S-H and shits, right? You want significant harms. Here's what you don't want to do with harms. Give me so many that you could never get to this last S of solving them. So as soon as you have enough that you think these are significant, stop. Don't waste your time, because where do you want to spend your time? Down here. This is what's eventually going to give you benefits to win the round. This is just set up. This just proves that we can get here. So as soon as you have significant enough harms, move on. Don't give me so many harms that you could never solve them. And you're never going to win a debate round because you had the most awesome harms ever. It just, you could lose it because you had really crappy harms, but you're never going to win it just because you had awesome harms, right? So just enough. Inherency. This is always tricky. It's a hard concept for people to understand when they're first walking into debates. Uh, but someone think you have an understanding can tell me what's the inherent barrier? Your time and land. The time you have to put to a dog can't be met because you have school. Okay, maybe. So it's just why is this not going to solve itself? And inherency is almost always some sort of attitude or policy is getting in the way. For example, if I go back to my ISIS example of bombing ISIS before the president came out the other day and said, yes, we are going to go bomb them. Uh, did we have a law saying it was okay, or did we have a presidential order saying it was okay to bomb ISIS? No. So there was a policy getting in the way of that action that he then had to overcome with his new plan. In this case, there's an attitude in the way. Prior to this very moment, we had an attitude that said we're not going to get a dog. 
And because of that, it was never going to happen unless we decided to make that risk, make that change, get up off our butts and do something, stop being lazy, stop being worried, and change that attitude and say, yes, we're going to get a dog. The dog was not just going to walk into our house all by itself. We had to overcome this attitude. Okay? A lot of times in debates, especially as you get further, they're not even going to talk about inherency because they just assume that it's there. But there might be a time in your life in a debate when you figure out that there's no inherency, that what they're saying they were going to do was just going to happen anyway, and then there's no good reason to go to all the effort of doing the plan if it was going to happen anyway. The example I used with some of you is, right, some people think that California should raise the minimum wage, right? Guess what? The California legislature already passed a law that said over the next couple of years, incrementally, the minimum wage is going to go up. So why would I do another plan to say raise the minimum wage when it's just going to happen? There's no inherency. There's nothing stopping the minimum wage from going up. It's going to happen without me doing anything. Great, I get to lay on my butt on the couch and I still get a higher minimum wage. So why do the plan? Okay. So inherency is the idea that we got to change something to make it happen. Yes? Would, uh, would you have a, a plan such that uh, it, it increases the uh, minimum wage more than the, the original plan? Then you would need inherency, right? Because now we're going to change something. Not only are we going to raise the minimum wage, which was going to happen anyway, we're going to raise it significantly more. And now, yes, you have a great affirmative case. But if you're just saying, like, we should raise the minimum wage, and without you doing anything, it's going to go up anyway, why would we do it? Okay. So what's, what's the plan? And this is, this is not a trick question. What's the plan? Buy a dog. Buy a train dog. We're going to get a dog. Keyword train. OK, you're, good. you're getting into the weeds. You can get more detailed as you want, but we're going to get a dog. All right? Yes. How does this, <laughs> OK, so we had problems. We had to change something to, uh, to do that. We've done it. How does that, this policy now solve those problems? And again, this is not a trick question. So my first harm was loneliness. What does the plan do to solve that? Yes? Provide companionship. One. Great. So now I'm not as lonely. So I got a companion, and that led to a decrease in loneliness. So, boom, I have solved my first harm. I'm worried about crime. How did the plan solve that? Provides protection. Awesome. I have solved my harms. Now the last one. So I have harms. I have a plan to do it. I've solved my harms. Do I get anything in addition to this that I didn't beyond just harms? Are there any extra wonderful things that come along because now I have a dog? Yeah. Uh, you, I, you're improving your psychological well-being. Okay. So maybe my first advantage is that my mental health goes up. Cool. If you're a guy and you're walking your dog um, for a female, <laughs> you're I'm going to get a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> or a boyfriend. Responsibility. You know, whatever floats your boat. Yes? Uh, don't pet owners live longer, so you'll die slower. OK. So not only am I going to have better health, but ultimately I'm going to live longer. And you'll have a girlfriend. OK. We can go ahead and stop there. Or you, want, you can tell me. I just don't want to go to it again. Oh yeah, the whole society benefits because now I'm going to be responsible for this dog instead of the community being responsible for it. Okay. All right. We we have done shit up. We have an affirmative case. Right. We have met those that basic burden of proof. Um, and so that's what you're going to do, whether it's as insignificant as getting a dog or as significant as going to war in Syria. These are the things that happen not only in a debate round, but in real life, right? When good policymakers are making policies, this is the process they should go through to decide if we're going to take an action or not. 
Uh, any questions about this basic format? So guess what's going to happen when we meet again later on in the afternoon in the third session? Oh, negative. We're going to talk about negative. And we're going to try to destroy this case and show why we're not getting a dog. We're going to go through criterion. So criterion is just the way to evaluate the debate. And usually it's cost-benefit analysis or net benefits. So if at the end I decide that, the, and basically you can look at the solvency and advantages, if I get lots of benefits from my solvency and advantages, then I'm going to win, right? Because I'm going to have more benefits than costs. Guess, and if I am trying to win with advantages, guess what the negative is going to bring those horrible negative people? Guess what they're going to try to bring up? Disadvantages. Disadvantages, right? And then if I have a bunch of disadvantages, they're going to be more costs than benefits, and the negative, mm, the negative is going to win. So when you're making the when you're doing your speech, um, isn't it kind of awkward to like do the definitions and then the criteria before you identify the harms before you? No, because you want to tell me what does the thing we're debating mean and how are we going to evaluate this debate before we ever get into the meat of the debate itself. Oh, okay. So what does that proposition mean? How do we evaluate it? Then we'll get into the case. And that those definitions and criteria usually are going to take you about twenty or thirty seconds. It's not a long time. It's here's what I think this means, here's how we're going to evaluate it, let's get into the case. All right, I've gone two minutes over. Your next session is in like 13 minutes. Thank you. You are such an awesome lecturer. Thank you. How do I? Take care. I don't know how to stop this. Yeah.